This is a beginning tutorial using 3ds Max and the populate function. Worst case scenario here is that I set the time configuration at about a thousand frames. That's taking into consideration the rate at which people move, which for us is about uh, 4.6 six, seven uh, centimeters per frame. So I set that around a thousand frames. You can see that it's uh, time model now is at 1000. I recommend that you create a layer for your populate figures. So that was an existing one, All right? Unfurl the ribbon, set your width. And then once you've done that, you will be able to create your flow. create flow, one click to start, second to end the segment, right mouse click to terminate the root. You can change the gender, you can change the number, and you can change the speed. Once you've done this, the next step is you need to simulate the movement of the pedestrian figures or the populate figures within your scene. That's done with the simulate button. After you've downloaded the data and installed it, you will be able to successfully simulate your characters as they move in the scene. Simulate. You notice that it's loading the repertoire for each one of the individual characters related to their gender, race, and speed. It creates a unique object for each one of your individual pedestrians. You can see how they show up in your object toolbar. Zoom in. You can see they are now physical 3D entities within your scene. And then you can hit the play button to watch how they begin to move in front of the Maison Domino. The next thing for us is to uh, render out a simple animation. So launch your render setup, set your number of frames, confirm the size that you want to output. Set up a camera. Now I'm very specific with the setup with the camera here. I'll adjust it a few times, but we don't need to see the portal where the figures appear or the portal where the figures disappear. So I'm going to set up the camera view so that we just see the individuals moving into the frame, not appearing out of the ether. So render setup. We don't need to render out all the frames. I'm going to keep it at 640 by 480. So I'll do just a range. We don't need to uh, simulate the whole thousand frames, or render out the, the whole thousand frames. Save a file, make sure it's going to your render output folder. Render these as a as a simple bitmap file.
And so if you simply witness here, you can see the figures in each one of the individual frames as they begin to traverse the screen. Okay, so we're going to assemble all these files in Adobe Premiere. They've been saved to the render output. Select the first image, make sure image sequence is selected, and then import all the files they've imported as a sequence. I'll just drag that sequence uh, into uh, the video track and then prepare to export the media. It's simple AVI, it's a custom preset. You want to check your codec. You want to make sure that the video settings match your frame size. The frame rate was 30, that's what we calculated, and the pixels are square. And we really don't need to make a 24-bit file because our data is only 8-bit. Our input frames only have 8-bit. And then you can export the file as an AVI. It doesn't take too long in this instance. And then proof of concept, we can play that AVI file from the desktop and you can see the figures as they move seamlessly now in front of the geometry in the scene. That's pretty much it.